Hi, this is a video about investment casting and uh, although it's primarily done for the folks at the Maker Barn to show them what kind of materials and such are available there, uh, it should be useful to others who want to uh, get into the investment casting. What we'll be doing here is casting this uh, particular little microwave horn. Uh, this horn was designed in a 3D CAD program and printed using a uh, resin type printer using uh, castable resin, in other words, resin that could be burned out in the burnout process of the investment casting procedure. Um, it's, uh, it's a small horn, so it requires a great deal of precision. Anyway, uh, in investment casting, it has uh, several different steps. One, of course, is uh, producing the, uh, the, the pattern that you're going to use, whether it's made out of wax or, in this case, uh, uh, printed on a 3D printer or other you know natural subject can actually can also be used um, but um, uh, I want to say there the other steps are uh, the next step after this would be um, uh, preparing the flask mounting this onto some wax sprues that sort of thing uh, mounting it in the flask uh, pouring in the investment compound when the investment compound dries we have to uh, we bake it out at a very high temperature and then that leaves a void which we uh, fill with uh, uh, molten metal. Anyway, uh, hope you enjoy the video and I uh, hope it's useful. Thank you. Uh, to, to do the first step, which is uh, mounting our, uh, our pattern, our model on the uh, on a sprue on the sprue base. Uh, here we've got uh, a little alcohol lamp which we'll be using. Uh, a, an X-Acto knife, a little spatula type device to uh, help shape our wax. Bring, I brought out the uh, wax pot just to m make sure I may need some, uh, some molten wax from the wax pot. And uh, there's a couple of uh, flasks. We'll see which one I'm going to be using, uh, which, which height. I'm in. This, is a, this is a sprue base right here. This is the model we'll be making a cast of. This is actually a uh, a uh, horn it's a, uh, a horn for 24 gigahertz so it's a, it's an antenna is what it is it's a very precise precision part it was uh, made on a 3d printer so uh, we'll see if we can turn this into a metal model um, we've got uh, some sprue wax here and uh, a little uh, wax cutter type device electric wax heater cutter and some uh, vacuum coat which is uh, assist the investment compound uh, to stick to the wax sprue and that's sort of thing, uh, flow across it very nicely. But anyway, this is all we really need for our first step and uh, let's get going. All right, let's see. This is a sprue base right here and you see this material fits right in here. So what we want to do is uh, attach a couple sprues to here and which would branch into one. The reason is is that I've designed this model such that I'll have good flow of material during in, in these areas right here. So I'm going to mount the sprues off like that. So first of all, I need to kind of guesstimate. I think I'll go with this taller, the taller uh, flask. It'll it'll give me a little more, give me a few more options here. So anyway, uh, let me uh, cut off some of this material, and, and I'm going to. Going to uh, make two short pieces, so oh, maybe about this long. Then I'll cut off a longer piece. This longer piece will be the piece that fits in the sprue base, so I want to make sure it fits all right. Yeah. Shorter pieces will attach to here. My little lamp wood up there.
of looks like those attach pretty well. What I want to do is bring them into this. Not sure how to do that. Start off like this, I think. And uh, what I'll do is start off with small pieces of wax. pretty good now I'm gonna, I want it to be too deep in there I think we'll cut this off a bit and I'm gonna do that on the edge of the table here now I'll push this down into here So that looks pretty good, really. Now this is the second step, much more complex than the first. Um, so here's our uh, investment material. This is a special super, super fine plaster that has refractory capabilities. In other words, it's, uh, it'll take very high temperatures. It's rather expensive, so we have to kind of be careful how we use it. I've got some distilled water I borrowed from the laser room a couple of uh, measuring cups to measure it out in, a scale so we can do this precisely. Here's our model right here, mounted on a sprue. <clears throat> Got a couple of spatulas, let's see, uh, the instructions, which is important, a mixing bowl and uh, a scoop. And also, uh, here's our vacuum chamber, and uh, we're gonna be using a vacuum chamber to degas the Material. So uh, let's get uh, let's get started. We have to first we have to calculate how much uh, how much investment material how much water is needed. Water measured out, and um, investment material measured out. I'm going to pour the water into the mixing bowl first and add the investment to it. Just make sure this is, make sure this is clean because you don't want any little pieces of dirt in here. Again, don't don't breathe this dust. Mixed up. They say like pancakes or, or pancake batter. I don't know. If you follow the the directions, you should be just fine. And you don't have to be a, a chef in order to mix this stuff up. This control uh, is connected to the vacuum pump. This is closed right now. If I open this, it will allow the vacuum pump to suck the vacuum. And this control over here lets the air back in to the system. So this would let the air back in. Down, the valves are closed. So let's go ahead and start up the pump. And I'm going to open this up. We're going to watch this very carefully. 
we, we want to bring it up to it starts boiling. But we don't want it to over go outside of the of the container. If that happens we can get uh, investment material actually into our uh, here it comes. So I kind of throttle the vacuum a little bit with the air release. See? I open up the air valve a little bit. It will drop, you see? I'm going to bring up that vacuum a couple times. You see the air bubbles rise and then the material actually starts boiling. The water, using water vapor. And, uh, Actually, I think that'll do pretty good. Let's see how it works. All right. All right, now we're all ready to pour. Material already. We need to work fairly quickly. I think we have about 10 minutes of working time. So I'm going to very carefully place the flask in the sprue base. I don't want to bump my my model and knock it loose. Push it down. Make sure it's seated well. I'm going to pour this in. And I'm going to pour it down the side so that it comes up from underneath the part. need to leave, leave a little room we're going to be using a vacuum technique for for casting so we need to leave, leave a little air space at the bottom that looks great so the next step is to pull a vacuum on this once again I'm going to put some tape around the top so that it won't overflow and uh, we'll try that all right let's have wrapped a little tape around the top I'm set up here back on our Vacuum platen. Get it on. Same process as before. You open up the vacuum valve carefully. What I don't want to see bubble up to the top is my marble. You have to be kind of careful not to lock, knock it loose from the uh, screw. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the vacuum pump. Let the air back in the chamber. All right. Now it's time to let it set, set for a while. You need it to let it set for about two hours before you put it in the furnace. All right, so we've been, um, we let this thing set up for a while, nice and hard. It's uh, good to let it set up for about two hours, but, but no longer than two hours, because we don't want it to lose its water. We we're, we're use a method called fast burnout requires that the plaster have it even water all the way through. So I'm going to pull off the, the sprue base real careful. I don't want to damage the and there we go. We got that's the wax. That's the end of our sprue right there. We have a little cup in here where we, where we can pour our metal and uh, this looks really good. Now I'm going to put this in the furnace upside down. 
can see it's very, very hot in there. It's at 732 degrees. That's Celsius, so that'd be 1350 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's set it in there, screw down. All right, it's been in there for at least an hour. So I'm gonna open up and flip it over. Ooh, it's hot. I'll put the spruce side up. I've set up the uh, melting furnace. So that's at 720 degrees, it's ready to go. I'm gonna be pouring some aluminum. Uh, brass, you'll have to be higher. Whatever your pouring temperature is, set it to that. I've also set up the vacuum platen, vacuum uh, table, so that uh, I remove the, uh, the white rubber piece and all that uh, dome and everything, put the red rubber, that's a silicon rubber piece in place so that uh, we can set the flask on there and pull a vacuum through the flask. Now it's time to reduce the temperature. So in the oven, what I'll do is I'll move this from high, where we normally have it, over here to low. And that will allow the, the temperature uh, controller to operate, and it will show us our temperature, even though it won't, be able, you know, it won't have the power to, to actually uh, make it hot. So here's the finished product. Looks pretty nice. I uh, cut off the uh, the sprues and, and sanded the back a bit. Otherwise, uh, haven't done anything to it. This is the way it came out of the out of the uh, investment. It's a very nice uh, casting technique and uh, produces very good results. Be sure to check out the Maker Barn on the, the makerbarn.org or our uh, Facebook site. Thank you for watching.